Welcome to this week's lecture on variation and non-quality. The cost of non-quality is substantial. It represents as much as 20% of every sales dollar. These costs can be so high that if you apply them to any firm, it may overload your calculator. Unfortunately, most companies don't know what poor quality cost and may never know until it's too late. Four major categories of cost relate to non-quality, external failure, internal failure, appraisal, and prevention. Let's examine each one. External failure costs are the least desirable and potentially most severe. In this case, customers bring a problem to your attention perhaps even before you're aware of it, because you've provided non-conforming products or services to them. Here are the major types of external failure cost. First is return product. These are costs related to return products include contact with unhappy customers, administration of your return process, review of a product to determine the failure mode, if any, and the cost of product repair and replacement. Next is loss of goodwill. Goodwill is a positive opinion that customers have about your company and external failure can really damage it. In most cases, costs to restore goodwill are quite high. Depending on the size of the customer and the specifics of the product or service failure, top management may have to expend large amounts of time to restore customer confidence. Then we have customer complaints. The cost of customer complaints often grows in proportion to increases in business. Tasks linked with managing customer complaints include identifying the source of a complaint, recording it, deciding on the course of action, and resolving it to customers' contentment. Taking care of these issues is not free. Next, we have recalls. A recall is a blend of return goods and customer complaints. A company usually instigates recalls unless the courts or the government has to get involved. Customers end up returning all or part of a product line. And you can imagine that this is very costly. A lot of money is expended on these tasks and also lose future sales because customers don't believe in your products. Next is warranty administration. Firms incur warranty administration costs when they need to repair or replace products. This can get expensive too if quality wasn't in place to begin with. Then we have penalties and litigation. Penalties in litigation are perhaps the worst types of external failure cost. In addition to paying money to customers, attorneys, and gov government agencies, firms also suffer negative publicity that harms a firm's image and reputation. The two most extreme form of external failure costs are bankruptcy, where your organization no longer exists, and imprisonment, where top executives of a organization will go to prison because they are responsible for these external failure costs, especially if they turn out to wind up in death. While not as damaging as external failure cost, internal failures create after the fact cost. Finished products that fail final tests are examples. Firms have internal failure costs for materials, components, assemblies, finished products, and information don't comply with requirements. Let's review the major types of internal failures. These types of costs can occur at any stage of a process. Poor processing. These costs are usually caused by faulty equipment, employees who don't follow procedures, untrained personnel, unsuitable environmental conditions such as hot or noisy work areas or defective materials. 
The short-term actions for these types of internal costs are replace, rework, or scrap the faulty item. The long-term solution is performing a root cause analysis and providing a permanent fix, such as new equipment, procedures, or training. Next is flawed design. Firms experience this type of cost when they make a product or deliver a service that fails to satisfy customers because not enough time was spent on the drawing board. This can happen when production must modify blueprints, materials, or processes to pass final test. Typical costs in this type of situation include rework or disposal of products and disruption to your company. I recall a new metal cap that my former company introduced for a new container. It created a perfect seal, but when you open the container, it had a sharp edge that inflicted a nasty cut. These caps ended up in the scrap heap. Finally, we have external supply problem. The cost of receiving non-conforming materials and services from a supplier are sizable. Chief among these costs are time to look for other options, production downtime, impact on other materials used with the defective parts, cost to find other suppliers, and meeting with existing suppliers to solve problems. The next two types of cost are internal cost of quality and represent a very large part of the overall cost of non-quality. Appraisal is commonly known as evaluation or inspection. The primary benefits of appraisal are detecting and quantifying defects. In addition to evaluating output, appraisal in the form of auditing also measures conformance to procedures. Appraisal represents a step in the right direction for achieving the desired level of quality, but it is limited. Its first limitation is that it uses specification or pass or fail criteria. Specifications don't adequately define what is acceptable because they are often set without a full understanding of what a process can produce. The second limitation has to do with human beings. We all make errors, even 100% inspection and multiple inspections are not foolproof. For example, Lewis, inspector number one at XYZ company, may be busy or tired and thinks, I'll let Josh, inspector number two, catch any problems. But guess what? Josh may be even busier or more tired than Lewis, and as a result, no inspection takes place. Let's identify and discuss some of the activities making up appraisal cost. First is preparing for and overseeing inspection and testing of output. These activities include the cost to acquire, install, and run equipment, and to record, interpret, and report results to management. Next is evaluating supplier provided information. Many products come with documents that support their acceptability. Certificates of analysis are a common type. Companies incur appraisal cost when they review these documents. Then we have maintaining a quality laboratory. Labs are part of the cost to create and maintain framework for appraisal. Finally, we have operating appraisal cost. These types of appraisal costs are concerned with processes, including the proper use of flowcharts, setup of machinery and test equipment, and use of environmental and document controls. Let's continue to the last type of non-quality cost, the cost of prevention. The goal of pre prevention is to perform work correctly the first time and every time. Prevention helps foolproof processes so that mistakes and quality problems are avoided. To effectively do this, firms need profound knowledge of incoming materials, conversion methods, including equipment, software, and human resources, and customer requirements. Key activities that make up prevention costs are identifying the root cause of defects and taking corrective action, training personnel, redesigning products and processes, and managing the quality system. Creating operating and updating a quality system 
requires a great deal of time. At my last company, I helped draft a quality manual, went to steering committee meetings, attended team meetings, meetings, and planned and conducted quality day celebrations. And I still had my normal job to do. Other activities making up prevention costs are the following. First is analyze customer needs. Firms that sh should consider using surveys to learn how well the company satisfies customer needs. Next is implement new quality tools. Firms should use quality function deployment and process capability to streamline operations and increase productivity. Quality function deployment converts customer expectations into clear company requirements while process capability lets you know if you can meet their expectations. Next is assess capabilities of equipment and process. Firms should think about developing performance measurements to gain insight into the quality of products and services. Then you have implement process improvement projects. An excellent way to improve processes is for firms to form cross-functional teams that initiate and complete projects which reduce costs and increase customer satisfaction. Next is review your organizational structure to determine what changes may be needed. Firms should look at reporting structures and make changes to improve quality and reduce lead time. Next is communicate with suppliers regarding new requirements. Firms should explore options such as using control charts instead of end of the line inspections with key vendors. Establish internal and external audit processes. Firms should think about forming teams to determine how well the company and suppliers follow procedures. Next is create a cost of non-quality report. Firms should determine what the organization currently spends due to non-conformance and other quality matters. Next is revised documentation. Firms should simplify unclear policies, eliminate wasted steps, and combine procedures. And finally, benchmark. Firms should identify best practice organizations and learn from their successes. Identifying the pieces of the cost of non-quality is a big step toward improving quality. Another step is reducing variation.